this is our first interview of Insider EF New York. Uh, when did you decide to become a teacher? Oof, that's a good question. When did I become decide to become a teacher? Um, I would say I'm not sure exactly when. You know, I I I've always loved teaching. You know, when I was a child, I I you know I, I would like I would teach my uh, my siblings. I would teach a lot of friends. Actually, the first time I actually taught was when I was 15, and I I I hated it because I was teaching um, four year olds, three year olds. Um, and then I thought, well, I'm never going to do this as a profession. But even when I went to university, I found that I ended up tutoring, um, a lot of my classmates. Um, they would come to me for help and then I would teach them. But, you know, I went on and I studied other things. I studied some law, some uh, political science. But by the time I started to travel around the world, I actually realized that I loved teaching. And so I think about 20 years ago, I decided that this is what I wanted to do professionally. What make you, mm, what make you enjoy? I think, you know, what I enjoy is seeing, um, you know, watching my students, seeing their response, you know, um, well, let me use, you know, EF for example, right? Um, you know, what I love is walking into the room, uh, you know, and teaching something which used to be, which they used to find difficult. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all of a sudden, um, when I see, you know, the, the light in their eyes saying, oh, I get it. I get it. I didn't know it before, but now I do. Um, you know, that gives me a very, 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 um, you know, good sense of accomplishment. Um, and then I tell my students all the time that, you know, um, when I see, um, you know, wh when I see the energy, you know, when I see the response, it also feeds me. And, you know, and then I, you know, and then, and, and that in turn is um, what really, really makes teaching um, very, very enjoyable for me. Mm. So it's basically like uh, your achievement is coming from student. Yes. Yeah. It's not from what I do. It's, it's from the response that I get. Okay. I, I was thinking we, we will point out this later, but I think some, something you just said, it's related to your words here. Sing, uh, teaching, the second one, uh, teaching must come from within and without. What does it mean? Um, so th th that's a saying that I, 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 you know, I develop myself, you know, um, and the, the full saying is, you know, um, people think, you know, teaching is something that you learn. Some people, uh, and some people think, well, you're either a teacher or you're not, you know, but I think, you know, teaching is a combination of both. Teaching must come from within. It must come from inside you. It must come from love. It must come from a place, uh, a place of passion, but teaching also comes from your experience, you know, from, uh, from around you, from the environment, uh, from living life you know, uh, from getting to know people, from connecting with people and from your education. So that's why I say teaching is a mixture of what you have inside you and what you get from around you. That's what makes you a good teacher. You must have a love for passion and then you must have a love for, in my opinion, for people. Speaking of EF, you've been teaching here for four years. So what do you like it the most? Um, what I love the most about um, teaching at EF is working with the students, meeting people from all over the world. You know, I've met, I don't even know how many people I've met, but I always say that there's no part of the world that I can visit now that I wouldn't know somebody, you know, and that's from working at EF. I would never have that, you know, if I had worked somewhere else. And the second thing that I love about working at EF, the people that I work with. I work with some of the most beautiful, and I mean internally beautiful as well as externally beautiful, <laughs> but I work with the most beautiful people, you know, that I've ever met. So it's a combination of the students and some of the people um, that I have been blessed to work with. So um, 
based on your observation, what is a special feature of EF students? You know, compared to other international school or university. Um, I would say、um, open-mindedness. That's you know to even to come here, you know to leave their countries and to be willing to come here to spend some time here, you know requires some、um, some level of open-mindedness, you know. So what I like about them is you know is their open-mindedness, you know the the they're willing to to meet other people to learn, you know. And for a lot of the students here, I think the best thing about being here is the experience that you get. You know, from learning to live with, there's no better education. There's no other way to know about other countries, to know about other cultures, than living with people from other countries. So I think for me, that's the best feature of the EF students is just their willingness, you know, to come here and、um, and to get to know other cultures and form relationships with people from so many different religions,、mm -hmm. uh, different countries. Uh, different cultures, you know, they have different traditions, different belief systems, but they're very, very willing to, you know, to learn. She's talking about us. Yes, <laughs> I am. I am. Is there anything dissatisfied you in Yev? Um, is there anything that dissatisfies me, um, in Yev? Um, to be honest, let's be honest. Nothing is ever perfect. You know that's the truth. If I said, "Oh,、um, EF is perfect," you know everything in EF is imperfect is perfect. You would know that I'm lying. Yeah, but what? And anybody, everybody <laughs> would know that I'm lying. So nothing is ever perfect, you know.、Um, but I think what it is is knowing that nothing is ever perfect. You know, you celebrate the things that work, you know, and then the things that you feel could be better. You try to do something,、uh, you know, to improve. Let me give you an example. Students, you know, say all the time that they came here to learn English, right? But they also came here to learn to、um, interact with English speakers, native English speakers, you know. With Americans, you know,、um, on the streets. So, and I understand that. So I feel like maybe that's something that we can work on, you know, even more. You know, I know,、uh, you know,、um, we've had some programs where we try to connect students with、um, with、uh, New Yorkers, so that they can actually, you know, get the opportunity to practice English in real life.、Um, Settings, so and、uh, you know, and the response was very positive. So, are there things that we could do better? Of course, every institution, every company, you know, could always improve on its services. So, you know, so I'm not going to say that yes, you know, that I'm dissatisfied. I just feel like, like every company, every organization, there are things that can be improved, and you know, and there are things that we. Can continue to work on, so that's something that I would like to see us work on. We've heard some rumor, like、uh, because of your career choice, you may not、um, stay in here for quite long term. You know, I don't think I will ever leave. Well, I mean, as long as EF、uh, agrees with me. Um, I would not like to leave EF completely forever because you know EF is a relationship.、Um, there's so many people, there's so many、um, products, there's so many uh, uh, you know branches all around the world.、Um, so I would like to always have some connection on 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 a certain level with EF. But having said that, I think that my time in EF, you know, full time. Full time is done.、Um, you know, it's been a great experience. It really has been, but it's time. You know, there's always a time to move on, and the reason for that is because I have a bigger passion. You know, I've always had a bigger passion, and my passion has always been to make a difference. You know, and I think, as you all know, I'm African. You know, and I love the African continent. You know.、Um, 
I've been traveling most of my life, but every time I've gone back to my country, um, I've always found an opportunity to help. And, you know, the, the gift that I have is that of leadership. You know, it's that of training, it's that of development. You know, and, and I've done a lot there. And when I go back home, you know, people know that. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to do. You know, so my calling is social justice. My calling is to raise the standards for everybody. So I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. My children have had very great um, um, education, but not every African child has had that opportunity or has that opportunity. In fact, the majority do not. So my, I feel I have a, I have a higher calling in terms of making, you know, providing quality education access to other children, you know? So if you ask me, you know, 20, 30 years from now, um, what did you do with your life? I would prefer to say I did something that touched thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people and changed their lives. That for me is a life with purpose. When is my time or when is it time to do that? Now, you know, the time to make a difference is always now. Not tomorrow, now. Yeah. Actually, as students, we we are sad to hear about that. Yeah, but we we are very admire what Angela's uh, pursue pursuing. Yeah. Thank you. Before we move on to talking about uh, Angela's life, personal life, we were uh, we are going to show the video to Angela now. As friend of Angela, when you think of her. Uh, what what kind of hashtag came out to your mind? Hmm. I would choose hashtag strong oh and educated God. woman. Oh my God. Hashtag caring and loving mother. Oh my God. And hashtag great teacher. Angela and I hang out a lot um, oh, outside of work, so um, <laughs> we'll go and maybe have a glass of wine together. Oh or my we, uh, we celebrate each other's birthdays and. Um, it's not, you know, not really a funny story, but what we went do? out to, um, we went out to dinner one night at do? a Mexican <laughs> restaurant and all of a sudden they closed off the streets because there was an accident. And so we were trapped in the restaurant. We couldn't leave because the roads were closed both ways. So we decided, oh, well, we'll just stay and have another glass of wine and, you know, until the road clears. So, um, but it was, uh, it's always fun hanging out with her. Do you, do you consider her a good joker? Like when she... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. She, uh, she jokes a lot um, and can take a joke. So, um, you know, if, we te if we're teasing each other, um, you know, she hangs out a lot with us in the, the activities department. Um, and we're kind of like a small family, so um, we all joke around with each other. So um, she can take a joke, and she can and she can dish it out as well. Very casual, very flexible, very easygoing. I sure. love her. But at, but at the same time, you know, um, you know, she's she's bright and charismatic, and she, um, you know, she knows her stuff. You know, she is sharp as a whip, and. Um, she knows her. She knows what she's doing. Uh, when I think of Angela, I think of someone who is deeply committed to teaching and their work, and someone who is also very passionate about things. Uh, I know that for a fact. Uh, I think Angela is a very innovative person. Oh, God. She really likes to kind of take ideas from all over the place and put them into her teaching, but not only her teaching, also into her life. So I think Angela really stands out in terms of cross-cultural exchange, right? So being from Nigeria, she has really never forgotten her roots there, and she takes the lessons that she learned there, and she tries to apply them to life here um, in her teaching and in her interactions with others. So I'm always learning a lot when I'm talking to her. And it's not only that, right? Um, sometimes people, when they move countries, they kind of forget about their home and try to just integrate into the new society. But I think Angela actually always kind of looks back and she thinks about how she wants to take the lessons that she's learned here and kind of apply them back home and kind of make her home a better place too. So I think, um, I think she's really 
very dynamic and has a very strong world view. She's a real citizen of the world, I guess. What I feel about Angela is that she has a tremendous presence in the field of education. Um, I feel like she lives and breathes education. And um, the fact of the matter is that she has worked very hard uh, in this uh, in her field that I feel like she'll be a belt on figure in the future. And she's someone that I, I would look up to as well. And the way they, uh, she describes her sons being very strong and, you know, they have interesting, uh, quirky behaviors that she finds, you know, uh, that is very unique to them. As well for character as... She's talking about my son. <laughs> how her character as personality is. She's not just a mother figure, but she's also a person who makes sure that her children are also, uh, kind of like the way she treats her students as well, like make them very independent in the choices that they make and things like that. And she accepts them for who they are. And that is the biggest point for Angela. Angela never discriminates anyone for who they are. Any weirdness or uniqueness in a person is accepted. She, she's the kind of person, she is who she says she is. There's no difference to her. That's why, like, she's one of those real people that you you can see her inside and out. So there's no uh, hidden agenda with her. Everything is out in the open. So there's not like you won't ever meet an honest person like her at all. I love and admire her. <laughs> I love her too. <laughs> we actually, oh my God. We actually ask them to keep the secret. So after watch the video, do you have any words to say to anyone? <laughs> um, I have to say some of those people like they, they they deceive me. Like they did. I can't believe Maria. I just had lunch with Maria today, and she did not say anything. You know about this? She acted so. Um, I'm going to miss. I'm really really going to miss them. Um. It's, it's priceless. You guys don't know what, you know, this, what you've done here is, it's priceless. This is a gift. We want to do that. <laughs> like, this is a gift. You just gave me a gift. A most beautiful gift. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gift. So, um, I love and respect them all. And um, a lot of the other teachers who are not here um, that I've had, you know, I've shared so many different wonderful um you know, experiences with, but I really want to say, you know, Maria, Deborah, Leila, um, Quinn, and Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Okay, let's move to um, talking about your personal life. Oh, yeah. Is, any, is anything easy? <laughs> We, we we start to make it easy. Okay. Um, yeah. After the emotional part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, how do you enrich your life? I have a lot of passions. You know. Um, first of all, that's if you ask my husband, that's the one thing he loves about me, and he will not admit it. But I think that's all the thing <laughs> that he hates. <laughs> that he hates the most about me is that you know I've always had a lot of passion and I always want to do things I always want to do so many different things so um and I've you know um from when I was a kid you know I wanted to start a gymnastics club I did you know um I was a track star an athlete you know runner um I've, I've always want, I've always loved writing. I've always loved teaching. I've always loved socializing with people. Um, there's just so many things. I have so many, um, I have so many passions. What, what is the most weird thing you've done? Most weird thing I've done? Most strange thing. Oh boy. I eat strange food. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> Like Chinese people, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I I can eat anything. So, um, I what 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 a lot of people cannot eat, I can eat. So, so I would say eating, 
weird things. That that that's probably the the most weird thing I've done because I eat practically anything. Okay, wait. Have you tried insects? Yes. Have you tried the pig brain? Yes. Good brain. Yes. Have Have you tried the chicken feet? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Angela is the only person <laughs> that I, you know that's I, yeah. eating chicken. Yeah. Yes, I have. Only one. Yes. Every time when when I'm talking about this, everyone's like, "Woo, disgusting." No, I I will. You know what? I always say, "How do you know you don't like it if you don't try it?" You know, when you say, "Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it." Did you try it? You know, so you you know, I always keep an open mind. I have to try it first before I you know I can determine if I like it or not. So I will try it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about some adventure here, yes. and uh, uh, in which kind of opportunity you've traveled over twenty countries? Um, so, my husband is a diplomat, um, and you know we've been traveling and living in different places for about twenty years. You know, so practically almost as soon as I I left university, I you know I got married straight away. And started having kids straight away while we've been traveling all over the world straight away, you know, at the same time. So um, I've been traveling. You know, I've lived in five different countries.、Um, I lived in Argentina,、uh, Mozambique, Chad,、uh, the U.S. of course, and Nigeria. And you know, I've traveled to so many different countries. I have family in Scotland, so we go to Scotland、um, a lot too. I went to school in Madrid. Um, so I spent a lot of time there, and so I, you know, I've, I've, we travel quite a lot. So, is there anything you are working on now?、Uh, I'm working on two things right now.、Uh, the first one is I'm, I'm writing a book. Actually, I finished writing it, and I'm in the process of editing it for publication.、Um, it's a book series, and it's called,、uh, it's the Little Book Series. Um, so the first one is called My Little Black Book, A.K.A. Black by Design. This is an idea、um, that I have had、um, for so very so many years.、Um, so you know, there's so many things that we fight about in the world. You know, there's so much prejudice. There's so much discrimination, and you know, there are people you know trying to do something about it in so many different ways. And one of the things that, especially living here in America,、uh, one of the things that I realize is that this issue of racism is very much alive in this country. You know, instead of trying to convince, you know,、uh, people, you know, about what is right and what is wrong, I looked at, you know, why don't we all celebrate what is special about ourselves, everybody. You know, and I, you know,、uh, my concept is, let's take a look at Mother Nature and what Mother Nature says about everybody. You know, if you look at your hands, not all your fingers are the same, right? The world is full of different, uh, uh, different types of plants. You know, animals, and everything has a place because everything has a purpose because everything belongs here. So I started with the one, of course, that's closest to me, and this is because I have three beautiful black sons. You know, so and I want them to be proud of who they are. So everybody should be proud of who they are. So the this my little black book, which is also called Black by Design, just looks at nature. The things that nature celebrates because of its color, and we all agree. We look at coffee, right? You know,、um, we celebrate coffee. You know, we wake up in the morning. We don't see anything wrong with that dark cup of coffee. It's just beautiful. You know, it's awakening. You know,、um, we look at things like chocolate. It's the way that we say "I love you." You know. We don't look at the color, the little black dress.、Yeah. You know, that's you know, you want to look elegant. One one of my favorites, red red wine. So I took twelve things that you know that we celebrate, you know, because of their color. So nature is saying, you know, I made things different for a reason. So I'm so my approach is, 
let's look at the things to celebrate within ourselves. You know, after this one, my next one is going to be my little pink book, which is all about women, you know, which is all about women. And then the idea is that it's going to go around. I'm going to have uh, my little mix book, which is Sugar and Spice, which is celebrating uh, multicultural families, you know, uh, mixed marriages, children from, from, from mixed relationships. So I'm just, I intend to go around you know, until we have all these different types of people and they all have a place, they all have a purpose, but they all have things that make them unique. And so my approach is, you know, a light-hearted celebration of who we are because this planet belongs to all of us. The second project, in 2008, I started a company called Education Enrichment Projects, you know, and just like the name, the idea is to come up with programs that support education and make it better. So, you know, from uh, 2008 to about uh, 2009, actually 2007 to 2009, I was partnering with banks, financial agencies to train teachers, you know, uh, in Nigeria. And then I, you know, in that, and I was also building schools, uh, international standard schools. And, you know, and then I moved here uh, in 2009. But even from here, I continued that work uh, while I was there. Well, now I want to go back to that. And so I'm actually creating a magazine, a professional development magazine um, for schools you know, um, back, I went back and I noticed that in Nigeria, the situation is worse. Uh, most teachers cannot afford to develop themselves. We had a governor who, I mean, and, you know, he was trying to do the right thing, you know. Um, he gave teachers a basic test and they failed it. You know, they failed the test because the training that they receive, that they're receiving is not the quality that it should be for the children of this generation. So 21,000 teachers failed, and 21,000 teachers were fired. That is not the solution, you know, because if you fire 21,000 teachers, you will hire 21,000 teachers who have the same quality. So I can go back and work with schools and also work with the government in trying to improve the quality of education there. Among all your kids who eat the most, Okay, don't tell him I said this. I, two of my kids don't eat a lot, uh, Martin and Malcolm. So Michael, the middle one, eats more. But that's why he's the healthiest one. Who is the most charming teacher in EF New York? <gasps> oh my God. That's like... Brian. Meaning. Why? He's very funny. Like, he's so, he's so much fun. So yeah, so I would say Brian Meany. You yes. heard Brian Meany. Name one food you like in Rita Ho. Fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Chef James is gonna kill me. <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> Who is your celebrity crush? guy that shoots the arrows in the Avengers. What's the name? You don't know? <laughs> He's my celebrity crush and I don't even remember his name but him. Okay. Yes. We'll type it later. You type the name. <laughs> you put the name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Name one animal you are afraid of. Snakes. What do you read when you are on the toilet? <sighs> my phone. <laughs> 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 so good. <laughs> What song do you sing when you are taking shower? Uh, oh, I sing everything. Today I was just singing, I like shapes, but she feels like a word could be. That's just pressing rain. I'm in love with the system. That's that you are in my class. The conscious, the <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, Angela joining us today. We've got uh, so much wise uh, words here and uh, it, uh, I, I don't think we can put them all on the board anymore and uh, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you 
teaching us? It was, you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, thank you for shocking me today. Thank you very, very much. Um, you know, and I just want to say one thing to my, um, to my students here. Um, you know, my life will never be the same, um, you know, since I met you all. And to my colleagues in, at EF, um, you guys are pure gold. And, of course, to my family, you are my life. You know, my sons, I, I, I adore my sons. My mom, my sisters, and my husband, they're my life. So I'm, I'm very sad to be leaving, but I'm also very excited about the next chapter. But to all of you, I really want to say thank you. Thank you for an amazing four years that I will never, ever forget and memories that I will take with me forever. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Angela. So that's all for our first interview of The Insider EF New York. I'm feeling. See you around. Bye.